Good afternoon. I want to thank everyone for coming out and joining me, Facebook Live and via YouTube on today <clears throat> with our uh, message for our lunchtime, which is taking our power back. And today is do not worry. So there are a few scriptures that I do want to come from, and I just want to ask God's blessings upon this time. And I pray that uh, something that can be said on today can help you and bless you during this time that we're going through this pandemic. <clears throat> we're going through a time that we are in a shutdown, that we are home and that we are waiting and praying for things to become better for our lives and in our country. So. Uh, the first verse I wanted to go through our passage is Matthew 6, Matthew chapter 6, beginning at verse 25. And it talks about take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. It's not the life more than is not life more than meat and the body than raiment. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubic unto his statue? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. And it jumps down and says, wherefore if God so clothed the grass of the fields, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Jesus is speaking. Therefore, take no thought saying what you shall eat or drink, wherewith shall ye be clothed? For after all these things, for your heavenly father knoweth that ye have need of all of these things. He already knows. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these things shall be added unto you. So therefore take no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought of things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Jesus is speaking to us today, telling us. Do not worry. We don't need to worry about anything, but we need to pray about everything. I want to adjust this just a little bit. Pray about everything and worry about nothing. Why are we worrying about nothing? Because God is in control. Jesus has already said in his word, that we are not to worry about anything, that he has us under control. You say, what is worry? Worry, the definition means it allows one's mind to dwell on difficulties and trouble, to allow our minds to focus in on difficulties and trouble about things that we cannot change. So I just want to ask you, just kind of reflect on some things that happens. We turn on the news. We can sit for hours sometimes looking at the updated reports on what's happening around us to gather information and to know exactly what's happening in our country, in our communities. But what happens sometimes instead of us just being concerned about what's happening, that concern turns into worry if we're not careful. And when we begin to worry, we begin to sin because that's something God told us not to do. Uh, this Bible uh, also goes on to say, Worry is a disease that causes other sicknesses. When we become so worried about something that we can't even control, we look at the news and we hear about the death toll and we hear about the more positive cases that's going on right now with the coronavirus. That is one of the present things. And we think about what's happening in our personal life and we think about those things that are not going the way we have planned and we're looking at our money and trying to figure out how they're going to stretch. And then we look uh, forward to say, well, how long is this going to last? I'm not sure if everything is going to be uh, what it needs to be as far as moving forward with my finances and with my health and with 
my relationships and so forth and with my job. And then it begins to turn into worry because now we're becoming consumed with doubt and unbelief. And what if this happened or what if that don't happen? That begins to be the problem. And so I want to encourage you that we don't need to worry about any good thing because we have Jesus, our savior, our redeemer, our provider, our protector, our father, our savior that is looking out for us. So when we look at the reports, we don't need to become to where we start creating scenarios. And what I mean by that, we create scenarios to say, oh my God, they say that if uh, you have problems or, or you have asthma, if you have this and that, then you may get it. And then you get yourself worked up to where you feel like you're having an anxiety attack to uh, an anxiety attack to where you become so worked up that anything feels like it looks like this must be happening to me. You cough and then you think, oh my God, I must be sick. I must have it. Huh? Uh, something is wrong. I need to go to the doctor. Oh my goodness. They're going to tell me that something is wrong. They're going to admit me. They're going to tell me that I have something. And then it, it's like our minds, it begins to take control and they overwhelm us with what if. And if this happens to me, I don't know what I'm going to do. We got to be very careful to lean and depend on Jesus because the word also says that he will keep us in perfect peace if we keep our minds stayed on him, Isaiah 26 and three. That's what it says in his word, that if we just keep our minds on him, he will keep us in perfect peace. Throughout everything that's going crazy around us, he'll keep our minds right here. If we would just lean and depend on him and think on him and to focus on his word. Uh, there are some things, uh, some of you all may be dealing with medication. I want to share something with you um, that God had to bring to me. Right now, as I'm going through this lupus situation, I am taking all of this medication that equals 12 to 14 pills a day. When you're talking about someone that goes from taking nothing but a vitamin or a supplement to now all of a sudden taking 14 pills a day of different medications, that can be overwhelming in itself. And so when it first started happening, it was just so much at one time. And then I began to read these that come in the medication. And those are the side effects and the warnings that tell you that these are some of the things that can happen to you while you've taken this. And I began to panic. I did. At the beginning, I panicked. And I even got to the point where I told my doctor, I went to my specialist and I said, hey, I'm not going to be able to take this because they say this is going to do this to me, A, B, and C. And I can't, uh, I don't want to take the risk of this happening. So I'm not going to take that. And so he went on to say, well, we're going to need you to take it right now because A, B, and C. And we don't need this thing to become worse when we get a hold of it. So even if we pull back and taper, down later, we need you to do this now. So I had just become so um, rebellious in a sense that I didn't want to do those things. And so God laid it upon my heart. He said, there are some things you are going to have to go through, but I'm going to see you through this thing. Because when, you, when I bring you through, you're going to be able to help somebody else that's going through it on how you made it over. So I need you to humble yourself and continue to pray. And so my prayer turned into praying for those that are overseeing my health right now. I got to pray for those doctors because they're practicing. But I know who my healer is and I have to continue to lean and depend on God. And I have to pray for them that God will continue to direct them in what they do for me. So I had to lay these out in my prayer closet before God. And I had to pray over them and say, God, I trust you. That none of these side effects, and I had to begin to go through and name each one, that they would not come not unto me. I bind this up right now in the name of Jesus. God, I trust you for healing. I trust you that these things will not happen. And God is so faithful. He is so wonderful, and I thank him for that. So I just want to encourage you, if you're going through that situation right now where you are on medication, now be involved in your health now. There are some things. I've had to say now, we're going to have to change something on this because this is not making me feel well. But for the most part, 
there are some things that we have to understand that we may have to go through for a season, for a period, but continue to pray over that and see what God is saying to you speaking uh, concerning your medications. I just want to say that as well, but continue to pray for your health and your healing and God will do that thing. This here, I'm looking at different reports from the first time I was diagnosed to now, updated uh, reports. And it's another thing. I can't worry about this. What is it going to change? The word says, what is it going to change if we sit and worry about something we cannot control? And if it don't happen, then we worry for nothing. But it says, but if, if we happen to have to go through some challenges in life, we can continue to be victorious through Jesus Christ, because that's where our strength comes from. So it's a win-win. It is a win-win. I trust God for my healing and health. I trust him with everything in me. But I have to be honest with everyone. I had to find peace in even in death. That if we had to face death, when we do have to face death and we have to go that route, uh, we're not caught up. That I have no fear of that either because it is a win-win. And when we talk about a win-win, we're winning if we're living and we are experiencing healing on earth. And it's a win-win if we're experiencing healing with our Father in heaven. And that is one thing we can get excited about and have peace about that we don't have to worry and we do not have to fret. I just want to encourage you on that. Even if you say, but the bills are stacking up and the money is not working out to take care of everything, leave it in his hands. And the uh, Bible goes on to say, my favorite scripture, Philippians 4 and 6 through 8, be anxious for nothing, but through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, Make your request known unto God and the peace. Thank God for his peace. That surpasses all understanding will guard our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. He's telling us you don't have to worry. You come to me and let me know what those things are that you need. Of. We know he already knows, but he wants to hear from us. And when we begin to cry out to him saying, God, I need you. I don't see how I'm going to make it. I don't see how things are going to work out for me. So I give it to you and I trust you with it. And we begin to, with thanksgiving, we thank him for what he's already done. And we ask him for those things that we request. And he will give us the peace and he will guard your heart. He will guard your mind through whatever you're going through, especially this time right now that we're going through. Because some people are struggling even with their mental health. If we keep our minds on him, Everything is going to be all right. And he goes on to say in verse eight, finally, my brethren, whatsoever is true, what is whatever is honest, just, pure, lovely, and of a good report. If there be any virtue and if there be any praise that we ought to think on these things. So while we're sitting at home, we have all of this downtime sometimes instead of us consuming ourselves with all of the news reports on what Trump is doing, what he's saying, on what the governor is saying, on why people are not taking it serious and, and the uh, everything opening back up and we have our concern. Instead of us getting caught up and becoming so overwhelmed to where we're not just concerned, but we become worried, let's begin to just thank God for what he's already done. Let's begin to think about all the things that are going right. Before we complain about, I'm tired of being in this house. I'm tired of being up in here. I'm ready to go do something else. We want God, I thank you that I'm here in my right mind. I'm healthy. I'm well. I have something in the refrigerator to eat. And all is well with my soul. We got to start thanking God and recognizing the blessings that we already have right in front of us before we just continue to harp on those things that we are concerned about. And let's be careful that it does not turn into worry because God told us not to do that because he's in control. And that's an insult to God when he has to say, oh, he of little faith. I thank God for my husband on yesterday. He preached that about the storm. We're in a storm right now. We are. The winds and the waves seem to be getting heavy right now. But if 
Jesus is saying to us, oh, we have little faith. Why are you doubting? He's saying you don't have to worry. I don't have to worry. We do not have to worry because he's with us. He is with us and he's in control of it all. So I just want to encourage you to remember those things. And uh, just understanding that peace is the freedom from disturbance. A freedom from disturbance. So we don't have to be disturbed about things that are happening. We can be free. That's what peace is. And God has given us that peace. And he is telling us, I will keep you in perfect peace if we keep our minds on him. So while we're going throughout our day, let's continue to keep our minds on him. As we go on day to day and as we uh, hear the reports, we can hear the reports and begin to pray and to continue to pray that all things are going to work out for us. And so a few things before we worry, instead of worrying, let's worship. Let's worship God for who he is. We thank him for being a savior, our savior, our redeemer, our strong tower. We thank him for being Jehovah Jireh, our provider, our way maker, the prince of peace. God, we thank him for being who he is. And before we panic, let's praise him. Instead of panic, praise. While we praise, we're praising God for what he's already done. We're thanking him for being so good to us. We thank him for the things that he's already done in our lives and what we know that he's going to do. We thank him right now. Before we complain, cry out to him. Don't complain, cry out. Whatever those requests are, whatever you're in need of, go before the father and let him know that you need his help. And before you become grumpy, be grateful. We have so much to be grateful for. We don't have time to be grumpy because God continues to bless us over and over again. We have to change our perspective and what we think about. Instead of thinking about what we don't have and put the focus on what we do have, we'll realize how blessed we really are. And before you get tired, trust him. Put it in his hands. Put it all in his hands because we know he can and will do it for us. And before you throw in the towel, continue to thank him. Continue to bless him. Continue to lift his name on high. Why? Because he's worthy to be praised. I want to share with you all a few resources about who is Jehovah Jireh. It goes down about our Jehovah Nisi, our victory. Jehovah Adonai, Lord and Master, and so forth who he is to us with scriptures to go with it. If it is something that you're interested in, I would love to send it to you. Just let me know and box my um, messenger or my email and I can send you those resources so you can put those up in your prayer closet and while you're praying, you can add up, oh, God, I know who you are to me. I know you're Jehovah Nisi, you're my healer. You can begin to say those things and just begin to bless God and love on him in your time of praise and in your time of worship that we want to focus on each and every day instead of worrying and complaining. You can have a concern, but don't concern, don't turn your concern into worry. When we're concerned, we have every right to be concerned on what's happening around us and our loved ones. We can be concerned, but as we're concerned, continue to pray. But when we worrying, we're taking that and we're becoming overwhelmed and we can't sleep and we're tossing and turning and we're turning to, oh my goodness, they said if I do this and this is going to happen, we can't do that. Continue to trust God on today. And salvation is key. Romans 10 and 9 says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Because when you're saved, you're safe. And you know that God got you and you're in a win-win no matter what may happen. We may have to go through some things, but worry about nothing and pray about everything. I thank you so much for joining me today for your morning message during lunchtime. I pray that something that was said can be a blessing to you and in your life. And I thank you so much for your time and joining me on today. You be blessed. Have a great Monday. And remember, God is in control. He loves you. And so do I be encouraged and know you always have someone praying for you. 
And to my lupus warriors that are out there, I'm praying for you as well. I'm wearing this on your behalf on today. And I'm praying uh, those of you all that are on the hydrochloroquine and cannot get the medicine you need because that's what's being used to treat the coronavirus. I was once on that medication months ago and had to come off of it. But I am trusting God that you will have what you need to make it another day. But know that our strength and our healing comes from God. 